Hello everyone, Sobro Neo Genie Reviews here, bringing you a new event guide. This time we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Guda Guda event in FGO NA. Um, and I'm doing the guides a little bit different this time. Don't worry, we're going back to the old style with um, Servant Spotlight, so they're going to be pre-recorded uh, and edited and all that stuff. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, EO Spotlight is up, and by the time this is up, Send no Riku spotlight should also be up, so check out those spotlights if you haven't already. However, when it comes to event guides, I like this style better. It's just easier, makes it so much quicker to get through the event info. And that way it doesn't have to be a 20 minute video. So let's just get right into it. So this is going to be the upcoming Gouda event, which will be dropping in NA in uh, September 2nd, so on a Monday. And you can ignore the dates here because this is the JP page. but. This is going to be a locked event. It's going to be locked behind LB4. So if you're a new player, unfortunately, you won't be able to participate this time around. This is only for late game players. So sorry about that. But if you haven't um, gotten that far in story, I highly recommend that you do because we are getting a really, really good welfare servant from this event. Not to jump ahead, but it's really worth playing this event. Um, so, I'll also include timestamps in the description so you guys can jump ahead to whatever part of the video you need the most. But let's start off talking about the main draw of the event itself, which is the servants. So, right off the bat, we're actually going to get a free servant. Let me see if they show her in the event info, actually. EO, yes. Our free servant for this event is going to be the four star ruler EO. I have a spotlight up on her that gives all the details, but she is one of the best uh, free servants we've ever gotten in FGO. Tremendous, tremendous arts looper, perfect for Castoria teams. Uh, really, really strong. If you can, if there's only one welfare servant you can pick up, I would highly advise you pick her. So definitely do the event. It's very, very important. We also have two new servants coming out. We have the four-star uh, Yamanami Keisuke, who's like kind of a support saber. Um, and then we have the Sen no Riku, the five-star quick berserker. Very good in uh, Scotty farming teams. She's kind of like a five-star version of Lancelot. So they're also good pickups. Um, I have full spotlights on them. Uh, Sen no Riku spotlight should be up already. And Keisuke spotlight will be out shortly after this video. So... Those will be linked in the description. Take a look. As for the event CEs, uh, the free CE for the event is Welcoming Journey. It's a Buster Quick uh, CE, 8% up, 5% NP gen, and it gives 30% starting NP charge. Of course, if you limit break it, that's 10% Quick and Buster up. Uh, I believe it's 10% NP gen or 8% NP gen. And then 50% starting NP charge. We also get a couple of EXP CEs as well. A uh, couple of good command codes here. The Consort of the Sun that inflicts burn is really, really strong on um, Yang. But it also gives 15% crit damage, so also really good. Eternity Mirror can be useful as well. Um, as is Ocha Nobu for removing debuffs. Other than that, the the paid gacha CEs are also pretty decent. The um, the five star one is pretty good. It's a challenge quest CE basically, full attack stats, lets you ignore invincibility, and it gives a good buff to NP damage and a small buff to Buster damage. Pretty good to pick up if you can. Four star CE and three star CE are just okay, nothing to write home about but the five stars is pretty decent as for the summoning campaign summoning campaign one is send no riku and two actually has a bunch of really strong servants on there uh demon king nobu himiko uh hijikata okita lancer ryoma lots of really good servants here should you roll this one okita altar um yeah i think if you have the quartz to spend i would actually recommend rolling this banner over campaign one uh specifically because there's just a lot more options here 
Um, specifically, Lance Ryoma is really strong. Okita Alter is pretty okay. Himiko is tremendously strong, and Hijikata uh, has also recently become quite strong, as has Demon King Nobu, so take your pick there. Uh, event shop, typical event shop. Uh, you'll be able to purchase copies of the event CE here. You can actually max limit break this event CE during this event, so you don't need to worry about having it drop from quests. Uh, you know, crystal lore, scarabs, plumes, all the good stuff you might want to pick up here. As usual, just pick up whatever you need from the shop. It's usually worth picking up. You get a lot of lures from this event as well. So yeah, pick up all the stuff. As for the event itself, this is going to be kind of a combo event. It's going to be both uh, a point ladder and a kind of like tea brewing mini game event. The objective is every time you clear a free quest, you're going to obtain different tea powders, green tea, yellow tea, and uh, red tea. And you can combine them in different ways to make different types of tea, which will reward you with tea points. And the more tea points you have, the more you clear the, the point ladder and get more rewards. But also, when you uh, make different types of teas, you are rewarded with different uh, ascension mats and different items. So it actually behooves you to experiment with mixing the different tea powders together. So for example, if we go back to the shop screen and tea brewing, here's all the different rewards you can make. Uh, if you brew 30 of the green with 30 of the yellow, you actually have a good chance of getting dragon fangs or 30 red and 30 uh, green will give you a really good chance of getting chains of the fool, which are really, really good. Spinal fluids over here. Uh, you can pick up your drizzle seeds. You can pick up magatamas. Uh, plumes are pretty good to pick up here as well if you have 25 of each. And you can also get some high level ascension mats like these leaves. Uh, these leaves are really hard to get, so. You might want to stock up on these. Um, or you can stock up on Black Tar. Those are really in demand as well. Or Demon Hearts, whichever you need. Basically, just focus on whatever Ascension mat you need the most. And just keep spamming out that uh, that T. Um, so you can get as much of the Ascension mat you need. It's kind of like a pseudo lotto in that sense. In that you can farm a lot of specific Ascension mats that you might want. So... Take advantage of that. Like I said, the story is uh, event locked, or I guess story locked. So you have to beat Lost Belt 4 to get here. Which means that the event itself is actually pretty difficult, or at least more difficult than the typical event. Uh, enemies have more HP than normal. Enemies have multiple break bars, things like that. So, just be prepared. It's nothing too difficult. But if you've beaten Lost Belt 4, you shouldn't have any problem with the story of this event. But just be aware. It's not as brain dead as most events. As far as unlocking EO, you can unlock her easily just by beating the main story quest. Once you reach, I think it's... 10 fights or something? 10 chapters? Yeah. Chapter 10, you unlock her permanently, so that's all you need to do. Um, there's also extra quests that happen after you beat the 10th chapter, which are like challenge quests, and that's how you get additional copies of EO. So make sure you do these so you can unlock her MP5. You can also get her ascension mats from the point ladder. So these are the points for the T for the uh, T's that you make. I believe, yeah, 30k, 50k, 75k, and 100k are what you need to get each of her ascension mats. So, fairly easy. You can get all her ascension mats very early on. The point ladder goes up to 2 million, but uh, you don't really need to go that far. At 900k, you pretty much get everything you need. So, at least try to hit the 900k mark, and you're fine. 
And that's it. Oh, no, well, let's talk about farming. Best nodes to farm for each item. The best places to farm, of course, are going to be the 90 plus plus nodes. I'll insert some other music here in post. Um, the 90 plus plus nodes are right here. It drops all the mats. What enemy is this? Assassin, and there's like a moon cancer at the end. This is actually really easy to farm with EO. So I would highly recommend leveling up your EO in the event uh, once you get her, so that you can farm this much easier. She gets a bonus for this node. But otherwise, your best farming spots are going to be Ancestral Cavern, the Caster node for the gold mat, the uh, tea bowls, as well as the red and green powders. You're going to want to farm the Rider node for the uh, Oban, the silver item as well as the yellow and red powders and then you're going to want to farm i believe it's quest 2 yes it's the saber node that has the bronze mat the whisk and the green and yellow powders as well so farm accordingly to what you need and you should be set and that's pretty much the event in a nutshell you just want to focus on mixing the different teas together getting as much points as possible to get those uh different uh, ascension mats and items as well as getting all the different ascension mats you need from the t's make sure you pick up eo by completing the 10 story missions and then the extra missions to get her, her uh, extra copies and you should be set it's a pretty straightforward event shouldn't take you too long to finish this is one of those events you can definitely like rush out the final weekend so don't feel too stressed about it and i wish you all the best of luck. Happy farming.